All right, this morning in this episode, we're gonna take a look at this here, Bugs 5W. Now the Bugs 5W is a Bugs drone. And if you've ever flown a Bugs drone, you know that they are the entry level drones uh, just before DJI and all the other companies that make camera drones. These are the drones you buy when you're learning because they're freaking awesome. They're really good quality and uh, there's no way you can't have fun with them. These are like the best of the best of the low budget drones. And now what's happened with the Bugs line of drones is they started to add little things into them like the bigger drones like GPS. So this one has GPS built in. It also has a 1080p camera attached that's removable. It's right here. And yes, the camera is electronic and it can go down and it can go back straight to move. But there is no gimbal on here. You know, there are some there are some shock absorbers, but there's no gimbal to keep it steady. So one thing I've noticed on YouTube, I've seen people review this drone, and it seems like everybody who reviews this drone has flown DJI drones before and they try to compare it to a DJI drone. It's not a DJI drone. This is an entry level budget drone. So your camera is not going to be like a DJI camera with perfect stability when the drone is moving side to side. Your camera image is going to move side to side. And if you move like this, like little things, your image is going to go up and down. So it's not designed for that. It has about uh, 15 minutes of flight time, you know, a solid 15 minutes. It does have return to home has a few other cool features. It has low battery warning in the controller. It will warn you when the battery's low. You can actually turn the GPS on and off. It does have follow me. It does have point of interest where you find some object just to rotate around and you hit point of interest and it goes around it. But of course, it's not gonna look anything like a DJI drone because once again, these are entry level budget drones. So what I'm gonna do today is take this out uh, for about the 15 minutes of battery life I get with this thing. I'm just gonna show you some of the features. So here we go. Start up our controller and it tells me right here the power level of the transmitter and right here is the drone, the receiver. It says there's no power because I don't have it powered on. So now I'm gonna power that on. Put the battery in, lock it in place. There we go, now they're connected. Now you see on the same area, now I have the power for the actual drone and the power for this here controller. And we're all set to go. Got the double beeps. Because there's a GPS in here, there's a compass in here. So GPS and compass work hand to hand. So you've got to spin it around three times. So underneath I should have some flashing lights. I don't know if you can see that there, flashing lights. So let's just spin you. One, two, three. You gotta do everything three times. It's a match number. Now they should be changed colors. And put it this way and spin it again three times. One, do this properly. Two, get you back. And three, and should be solid colors. There we go, we got solid colors all around. So it should be good. I would assume. I think red means good. I'm not sure, but anyways, we're gonna find out. So we're all set to take off. That's good. If we look on here, now we have to wait to catch satellites. Right here, it says zero, that's our satellites. So we have to wait to catch them actually. There we go, now it's on satellite mode. So we have to see how many satellites we're gonna catch. That's the take off and land control, this button right here. Just hit it to take off, hit it once to land. Start, stop the motors right there. That's your return to home button, and that's take a picture button. Pretty good. That's your satellites. Turn them on and off, so you wanna fly in GPS mode or not. And over here is for beginners, you can fly in headless mode or not. Now you see I have 10 satellites. I don't know if you can see that with my camera angle. So 10 satellites. They recommend that you have at least uh, seven satellites, so we're good to fly. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the app. So I'll put my phone up here. So I'll pick the Bugs 5W, go, record start, hit the motors. Hit the up down button right here. Should take off. And with GPS, it should stay perfectly locked in the air, which it is. Sitting there, it's got to figure out its compass. All right. So now I have full control of the drone. I can go up. I can come down. I can spin it around. And if you look at the front, the camera, I have a little dial on my controller right here to move the camera. Oh, I see, this drone is designed to have the camera shooting downwards a little bit. So there it is. So I can look down at me, so I can come under it here. Here I am, waving. And if I put it all the way forward, it's designed to go not straight forward. At least on this drone, it doesn't seem like it wants to go straight forward. It goes right there and it says, that's it. So it's designed that if you go up, you're always slightly looking down. Maybe it's for the image exposure or whatnot. So the sun is behind me, so if I flip around to the sun, this might be a good thing because then 
the sun is not going to blow out the image. Cool. So I've got some city workers over there. Let's just go over that way. I'm not gonna freak them out because they'll get pissed off at me. So every time you stop, the camera moves a little bit because it gets jerkiness of the drone actually moving. Now, one thing that's cool is up back here, I don't know if you can see this on my camera, my GoPro camera, it says H, which is the height. I'm at 27, I assume I'm at feet or meters because I haven't changed it to metric and distance is 77. So I would say that's probably, I don't know what that is, feet or meters, can't be sure. Anyways, we're coming back. I hear it. I don't see it, but I hear it. where are you? Where did I put you? Holy cow, this thing flies fast. Here I am talking. I've literally flown out in a farmer's field while I was talking away, just like trying to move it forward or backwards. This thing is way too freaking fast. There it is. No wonder I couldn't see it. It's like, <laughs> holy crap. There we go, I'm bringing it back to me. That was quite a distance away. That was out in the farmer's field. Here I am. I thought it was just like a few feet away from me, but no, it's over there. That thing moves. Wow, that thing hauls butt. Okay, so let's bring it down and try some of these features before I lose it again. Oh my God. It does have a return to home though. That was a pretty far distance. Okay, so let's bring it over to me here. Let's bring it over to me, the guy who doesn't have a clue what he's doing with this thing. So next thing I'll do is the one that everybody loves on any drone is follow me. Let's see if it even works on here. So I'll turn you back this way. So I'm in the sun and the drone camera's not. Now it doesn't have a follow me mode like a lot of people try to test it out like DJI where it's like follows an actual individual. No, it should just follow the, the remote controller. So here we go. I'll hit the button that says follow me. It says once follow me function is working, the camera lens will keep pointing at the mobile phone and remain constant distance to the mobile phone. The throttle altitude could be adjusted manually. Do you want to start it? And I say yes. It says I'm in follow me mode. It should be looking for my phone. And because it's looking for my phone, if I walk backwards, it should follow my phone. Of course, if I drop my phone on the ground, well, we're kind of out of luck then. So we are doing follow me. That's I'm not touching anything on here. Controller's right here. It's just doing its thing. And no, for anybody who's about to ask, it does not have obstacle avoidance. It doesn't. So if I had an obstacle, well, that's it. Let's see if I walk sideways. It should follow me. Like once again, it's going to take the shortest path to me, no matter what. So it doesn't, it doesn't really have any system to go forward or backwards. If I put my back to it, it just keeps following the phone, wherever the phone is from the shortest angle possible. So that's pretty cool. And I'm walking towards it now. So it's actually going backwards. You'll see the, the video will get kind of uh, bouncy up and down now, because as it's going backwards, it's trying to keep my pace. So it's, it's uh, moves a little bit, stops, moves a little bit, stops. But it's doing a great job for the follow me. I'm coming right back to where it took off. Okay, so we know follow me works. And now let's go to point of interest. It says, with point of interest, your aircraft will continuously circle clockwise around the preset point. The point of interest is set at 10 meters forward the aircraft by default. To change the point of interest, uh, go to your settings. Anyways, so 10 meters forward. So here we are. I'll say yes. So it should circle whatever it was looking at 10 meters. It's not it doesn't worry about your phone because I could send it out to look at something away out there. So here I'm looking up at it here. I'll go walk in the center where it's spinning and you'll see. So right where it was sitting, it will do a circle. So there we go. I have to put the camera down. There we go. Now you'd see me now it would go around me. I'd have to go this way more. So this is a good thing if you're out filming something. So I understand how it works now. So let me try it over with uh, something for it to look at. It is in meters, by the way. I finally figured that out. Okay, so say this is what I want to film. Something here in the park. Now it's only gonna make a 10 meter circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right in about the center of this stuff. I'm gonna face it this way. I'll let it calm down a bit. So it should do a circle and I could control the camera. So put this down a bit and I'm gonna go point of interest Yes, there we go, make a circle. So now if you had your family down there, it's perfect. You could be filming them while they're playing at some site around the world while you're on vacation and have this really cool shot of the drone going around them. It's pretty good. One thing I will say about this drone is it is actually pretty quiet. It's not bad. And for battery power, it's only supposed to get 15 minutes, but I'm looking at my battery power here and it's got four bars and it says I'm only down one bar. 
which is nice. Okay, so let's bring her back. So here's the problem. This here controller makes a connection with the drone and this controller and that drone can talk to each other for 300 meters, which is pretty far. This phone uses a Wi-Fi signal from the actual drone. The drone shoots out a Wi-Fi signal to the phone. And as you know, a phone or a tablet is really wimpy when it comes to Wi-Fi. So I'll see how far I can go before I lose the Wi-Fi signal. All right, got a farmer's field out there. Okay, I'm at a distance of 120, 133 meters, 140. Well, well, that's pretty far. I don't know what the heck's going on now. I'm still getting video signal. I thought there would be a crappy video signal. I'm still going. So I'm almost at 300 meters here. Oh, oh, am I losing it? It's still going. It is still going, guys. Okay. I've lost it there. I'm at, it gave me 425 meters, which is dead. Aircraft not connected. So now we have to rely on this little thing called return to home. We get some beeps. What's the beeps mean? More beeps. What's that mean? Oh, does that mean it's going to engage return to home? See down here, I should have a return to home. Oh, I do have the H. So there's a little H. Can't, I don't know if you can see it there. There's a little H. It says returning to home. So as I said, this here makes a better signal than your phone, but that was pretty far I got out there. So if you fly this thing early morning, you'll get a lot. This is early morning. You get a massive rain. Well, there it is up there. Look at that. It's coming back. So where's it going to land? Where are you going to land bugs? Now it took off from that H over there. It is not again. It's not a DJI product. It's not designed with accurate precision landing. It just can't do that. It's just going to land where it lands. So let's. Let's see where it lands. It says I'm at half power. So all that flying I've been doing, I'm actually at half power. It's coming down and it's probably going to land on my freaking video camera. Are you? Because it doesn't know what the landing area. It just says, I'm coming down. Get the hell out of the way. So what do we have here? Oh, shit. it is going to land on my video camera. Get the bag out of the way. Land that. Oh, we're good. We're good. Okay, so that's pretty impressive. Bugs, you took off over there and you land it right there. So you see at the top, it shows me my satellites are at 18. My battery power, as it says, is at two bars. My remote controller power is good. My Wi-Fi is good. My connection's good. It shows you my distance, my height. Here's the settings menu. The good people at MJXRC sent me this Bugs 5W right here. Let's do a quick unboxing. In the box you get the quick start guide and the full instructions right here. Next you have the drone itself which is really well made. This one here is just your normal Bugs drone. They stuck a GPS in it and under here they actually put a 1080p camera with a movable gimbal. And you can actually remove this here camera from the bottom of the drone if you wish. It has what's common on all Bugs drones and that would be brushless motors, extremely powerful. These things really move. The front of the drone has LED lights under the arms and I believe these might be LED lights. You have LED lights in the back and you have your battery compartment and nice long legs for taking off in the grass. The camera is 1080p and it does take a micro SD card that goes right inside the camera so you get high quality video going right from the camera to the micro SD card. The camera itself has nice little shock absorbers for vibrations. Here we have the battery. It's a 7.4 volt 1800 milliamp. Comes complete with charging system. Four spare props. This white thing is a propeller remover and you get a nice little screwdriver. Also comes with a cell phone holder and it comes with a really nice controller with a display at the bottom and the controller takes takes four AA batteries not included. We have the drone, the battery, slam it in. There we go. Power's up. I'm going to flip it upside down so I can weigh it right here on the scale. Let's see. Battery and drone together is 394 grams. All right, so that was the flight of this really cool, really amazing Bugs. 5W. Well, if you've never considered buying the Bugs 5W and you do not have a DJI or an Autel or a unique drone and you want something that is inexpensive, uh, has a lot of cool features, and especially if you want your children to start learning to fly a really good GPS drone, well, then you can't go wrong with this. And at night, let me tell you, I'm not going to fly it at night, but these here light up and this all lights up on the bottom and it looks really wicked when it's coming at you all lit up. It's, it's a pretty neat looking drone. So all in all, really good drone. I'm going to put a link below to where you can actually go find out more information on the website. If I find a spot for it on uh, Amazon, I'll put a link there or some other store and you can check it out and see if it's something you'd like to buy. I highly recommend this drone for beginners trying to get into GPS drones. It is a good way to start if you don't want to spend very much money and it's pretty durable. Uh, the only thing I would recommend is that if you do get this drone, you might want to pick up one spare battery because you saw here I flew for about 15 minutes and you'll need a second battery if you want to.
to keep on flying. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.